A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far... Okay, scratch that last part. But a long time ago, I had a request for a tutorial on adding beads to cross stitch. Unfortunately, at the time, I'd never added beads to cross stitch, so I needed to learn how to do that first. But here we are, finally. Today we'll go over the different ways I know of attaching beads to your cross stitch and also we'll look at a free little pattern that I've whipped up for you to practice on. If you're new here, hello, my name is Michelle and I'm a proud multi-crafter who loves to make all the things and encourage you to do the same. On this channel you'll find other tutorials and freebies as well as craft diaries, project vlogs and whatever other opportunity comes up. If you're not new here, welcome back. I imagine most of you are way more knowledgeable about beaded stitching than I am, but hey, stick with me and you can let me know if anything I say is nonsense, okay? Teamwork. So let's get started. To add beads to your cross stitch, you will need beads and cross stitch. I'll be using Mill Hill seed beads today. They're widely available and come in a ton of pretty colors. Please note, beads should be added as your absolute final step. That means stitching should be finished, washed and ironed before beads go on. I'm going to demonstrate on blank fabric here, but I just wanted to mention that for anyone following along on a finished piece. Now, it is possible to use a regular needle as long as it's small enough for the beads you're using to fit over the eye. If you see here, this is a size 26 needle and the bead almost fits, but it gets stuck on the eye. No good. I've heard that needle sizes 28 and down will work with these beads, but it's just going to vary depending on what size and shape and brand of bead you're using. The more recommended tool is an actual beading needle. I got a multi-pack of these things from Amazon for just a couple of quid, so for the convenience alone, totally worth it. As you can see, these are very long, thin and flexible. They're also, my fingers can attest, very, very sharp compared to a normal cross stitch needle. Be careful not to stab yourself or to snap the needle, they are quite fragile. To actually attach your beads, you have a couple of choices. You can use your bog standard embroidery floss, or if you'd rather have the bead look like it's entirely standalone and has no stitch, you can buy clear beading filament like this. One additional tool some people use is a special sticky surface for holding beads so they can't escape. I don't own anything of the sort, so no doubt we'll have a beady disaster halfway through this video, but this is the sort of thing you'd be looking for. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at the simplest way to add a bead. Here I've come up at the bottom left of my Ada square because that's just generally how I start my cross stitches and anything else feels wrong to me. I'll add a bead over the needle and down onto the thread, then go back down at the top right. That's it, my bead is on there. It has one leg of a stitch underneath it and you can see the bead is laying diagonally on the fabric. You're basically just doing half of a cross stitch with the bead in the middle, very simple. You can of course do it in the other direction too. Let's do a row where we start from bottom right and end in the top left. Whichever direction looks best in your project and with your usual direction of stitching, just go with that. Method two is also going to have the beads lay on the diagonal, but this time we're securing them a bit better. You see how in method one, the bead is a little bit loose and floppy and the lines are generally a bit uneven. These are only secured with one leg of a stitch after all. In this method, we'll start off the same way. I've done exactly the same as we did above, but now I'm going to complete the cross stitch. So I'll come up at the bottom right and down through the top left. However, before pulling the floss tight, separate those two strands and lay them one each side of the bead. That was maybe a bit tricky to see, but we'll do it again in a second. First, let's look at the difference it makes. Visually, the main difference here is of course the half versus full cross stitch. If you have an aesthetic preference for one or the other, great, you do you. But you'll also hopefully be able to tell on camera that while method one gave us quite loose wobbly bead placement, method two secures them right in the middle of the stitch. Again, that might not matter to you. You might love the look of method one. I'm just showing you your options here. I've done a few more and as before, we'll do a row in the opposite direction too. Lay down your first half stitch with the bead on it, make the second leg, but separate the strands around the bead before pulling tight. Diagonal beads in both directions, sorted. And just look at how neat they are compared to the wobbly lines of method one. Perfect. So that's diagonal beads covered, but what if you want them to lie vertical or horizontal? Method three will be vertical. So to begin, I'll do exactly what we've done every other time. But now we want to sort of pull the bead in the direction we want it to lie. In this case, the top of the bead should move to the left and the bottom of the bead should move to the right. 
So bring the needle up at the top left and pass back through the bead itself, now down at the bottom right. See how that pulls the bead into a vertical position? Let's see it again. Start off normally, bottom left, bead, top right, now back up at the top left, through the bead, and down at the bottom right. Ta-da! If you do your stitches in the opposite direction, it's just as simple. Come up at the bottom right, bead, down at top left, now up at top right, through the bead, down at bottom left. So we've seen that you can get the bead to lie wherever you want by making sure your stitches pull it in the right direction, and it's exactly the same principle with horizontal beads. Once again, I've started by coming up at the bottom left, adding my bead, and down at the top right, but whereas last time we wanted to move the top of the bead to the left to get it to lie vertically, now we want to move it down to get it to lie horizontally. So we'll come up at the bottom right, through the bead again, and down at the top left. What I've shown you here has all been on Ada fabric with the four corner holes per stitch. However, if you're working on even weave or similar, that also gives you another option for adding beads. You could literally just stitch straight across or down the middle of where you want that bead to lie, much like we did with method one, except in a different direction. Now, before we move on, I've so far added beads to empty space, but what happens if you decide to add them on top of existing cross stitches? Well, the short answer is it's exactly the same, except there's a stitch there already. I'm still using two strands, same as before, coming up at the bottom left of my existing stitch, adding the bead, and down at top right. I could leave things here like in method one, but you'll find the bead won't stay centered and naturally wants to fall to one side of the stitch underneath it. So you could go for any of the other methods to secure it. I'll go for a vertical bead, I think. Same thing we did before, come up at the top right, through the bead, down at bottom left, and there we go. This obviously does add bulk, as you now have two cross stitches on top of each other, but can you actually tell? No. The bead is in the way, so it's not worth worrying about. So those are the methods I know for attaching beads to cross stitch. No doubt there are many more. If you have a favourite method that I didn't mention in this video, please let us know down in the comments because it's going to help me and also other people watching this video too. If you did find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up, that helps me out a lot. And if you like my style or lack thereof, consider hanging around for more tutorials in future. I do take requests, you know. All right, so you're now a beading expert in theory, but it's always good to have a piece to practice on, right? Well, have I got a free pattern for you. It's quick, it's cute, and it calls for beads to be attached vertically, horizontally, and diagonally so you can practice all three. To grab the free pattern, head over to my coffee shop linked in the video description. And while you're there, feel free to check out my other freebies that I made to go with other video tutorials that you might find interesting. As always, donations are very welcome and appreciated, but by no means required. However, this time we're changing things up a bit because, you know, I need to eat. This is cute, right? You could put it in a tiny frame or finish it as a cushion ornament. But if you do choose to donate, you will also get access to the larger version of this pattern. And that applies retroactively. So if you've supported me on Kofi in the last month, the larger version will be automatically unlocked for you. I always want my tutorial patterns to be available for free, and you can practice your beading with the small version no problem. But this is just a bit extra for anyone who wants to help support me and the channel and help me buy supplies for the next one. <laughs> Thank you in advance for anyone who does decide to take the larger version, it really means a lot to me. But that said, if you prefer the free smaller version, totally fine, I would love to see your finished piece. Please tag me on Instagram, Reddit, wherever it is that you post, because it will make my day. That is all from me today. I'll be back soon with some more crafty nonsense. So in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day and keep making cool stuff. Bye!